Okay. Woo. This is a video going to be responding to Alex Leonard and your questions about a new editing rig. Whether or not to go PC or Mac or Final Cut or Premiere, those types of things. So let's go over to your question. You just Facebooked me basically. Question number one. What editing software do you use? Well, I use Premiere Pro. So it's Adobe Premiere Pro. And the reason I use it is that it just comes with the whole suite of what you could need. So they come with like Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Media Encoder. I'm probably forgetting a bunch, but they come with tons of things that you might need. So for the design and motion and video and just everything you could possibly need, they have it. Boom, done. Now, recently, I have been moving over to DaVinci Resolve. So that's Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve because of color. But I've also started to move back to Premiere Pro now after using, for the last year, DaVinci. It's kind of confusing, but I would say Premiere Pro is probably what you want at this point. Reason being, it's robust. It takes pretty much everything you can throw at it. Whereas DaVinci Resolve, it, it needs a little bit of tender love and care sometimes. It's getting a lot better though, and I really, really love its color. Nothing can compare, and Premiere Pro can't even compare to DaVinci Resolve. That's, that's that for color. But I'm starting to try to pump out content more often, and then that is where Premiere Pro shines. Because of the integration between After Effects and Illustrator and Photoshop and all of those things, it just makes it way easier. Boom, done. I don't like the subscription model, but I also kind of understand that software developers need to get paid for their money, that they keep on upgrading the things. That's, that's a whole other subject for another time. Question number two. Are there really any losses of getting a laptop versus a desktop for editing content? The answer is yes, there is a significant difference. Will you notice is maybe a better question. The answer is probably no, especially if you're not doing crazy stuff with your timelines. Uh, you're currently editing on an iMac from 2010 or 20, 2008 or something. I don't know. Either way, it's rubbish and it can't. It, it was fine at the time. I'm not trying to shit on it. <laughs> but it just can't last. You can't expect an old computer to run new programs. I can guarantee you that if you were editing footage that was from an, a cell phone from 2008, you could probably get away with editing your whole timeline in that. The difference is that you're editing new footage with new codecs and new time, like new bit rates, and it's just higher def, it's 1080p. Your computer can't handle that. So meanwhile, if you get a laptop, you're gonna be happy. If you get a desktop, you're gonna be happy. Now. It's totally situational based. I've already thought about this and I'm gonna say the laptop is your better option. For me, having a laptop and a desktop is nice. Here's the biggest thing. Desktops are more customizable. Laptops are way more convenient. Laptops are more expensive. Desktops are way less expensive. And the CPU power, so this is the computing power, how many numbers it can crunch. The Laptops are gonna be inherently inhibited. Just, they have to accommodate, they'll be less powerful. They have to accommodate being only battery powered. They can't only say, we're only gonna work when plugged into the wall. People would hate that. They would take, um, and I would too, I would take a cut of the CPU power in order to be able to go on my couch and lay back and use my laptop as a laptop and not only tethered to a wall. Imagine having to bring an extension cable with you. No, bringing a gas generator, suddenly the laptop does not make sense to have if you can't not have it plugged into the wall. So inherently laptops are less powerful. If you have a desktop, you might get four. Okay, actually let's, let's just check real quick my CPU here. So my CPU on this computer, which is built like three years ago, four years ago now, I, I can't recall, but my CPU, what's its clock speed? Okay, so I, I just Googled it real quick. My computer's clock speed is 4.4 gigahertz. That's, that's a lot. Now it is quad core and it's like an older generation, but it's still really fast. Meanwhile, compared to let's say your Apple one, actually all of these, they're 2.2 gigahertz. So inherently, laptops are slower because they have to accommodate when you're on battery power. Even if you're gonna be plugged into the wall the majority of the time, like 95% of the time, it still doesn't matter because the computer has to accommodate. Like that CPU can't be bigger. It can't want to have more power. It, it, it can't. 
So it, that doesn't work that way. So back to your question, are you gonna see a difference? Are there any real losses? Yeah, when you render out a video, it's gonna take a long time compared to a desktop. But does that really matter if it takes a long time to render? No, it, it doesn't, especially if you're not putting out that much content every single day. You can just go get a coffee or go do something or go, I don't know, freaking go for a run. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You don't need it to render out that fast. While you're editing, it will be a little bit slower, but you can use proxies or there's ways around that. It's gonna be just fine. Tons of people and tons of YouTubers just use laptops because they're way more convenient. And especially for traveling, you can just bring your whole editing station with you. Or if you wanna bring it over to a friend's house, you can do that. Otherwise, you're stuck at your place where you set up. That's that, that's, that's the truth. For your situation where school might be on the horizon or if you are editing with friends or going over to other people's houses, or asking for critiques in person, or going to a theater and plugging your HDMI to show it on a big screen, etc. Laptop, obviously. All of those things you can't do with a desktop. So no matter if the desktop is better technically, it doesn't matter if you can't use it the way you want it to. On to question number three. So your opinion between the two ASUS models here, is having a higher performance graphics card that important for editing, as well as extra internal SSD space? Okay, so I did take a look. Let's just split screen this real quick. And we're talking, I have a bunch of other tabs open and I'll get to that one in a second. Okay, here goes. This is where it gets really interesting. These are essentially the same computer. At this price point, just stop looking at the price. Just you're between $2,000 and $3,000. If a few hundred dollars is gonna be savings, perfect, cool, done. I would not buy either of these computers. They have both the same CPU, same with the Apple one that you suggested later on. They have 2.2 gigahertz and it's about the same CPU. They might be slightly different models doesn't really matter in the end. Meanwhile, they have different graphics cards. So I did look this up. The RTX 2070 is a newer model. It's within three months, it's newer. I checked this up. It's newer, but they're about the same. You could be happy with the GTX 1070 or the RTX 2070. You could be happy with both. You won't notice a difference probably. The difference is not really in price because here's the thing. You get a one terabyte SSHD hard drive in the cheaper one. Now, don't be fooled, that is not an SSD. So you have, on, on the left side, you have a half a terabyte SSD. I would choose that over the one terabyte hard drive and the 256 SSD of the other one. So on the cheaper side, you have a one terabyte SSHD. And when we look that up, so I already did this up, but SSHD versus SSD, let me just read that out for you. So SSHD stands for solid state hybrid drive. It's a traditional hard drive with a small amount of solid state storage built in, typically eight gigs or so. Now, here's the problem with that. It's basically just a hard drive. You're not really gonna notice that much faster speeds, especially when you're dealing with way more than eight gigs of footage. What happens with those drives, at least for, as far as I know, the cache holds the most used stuff and you use that stuff and that's why it's like, wow, this drive is so fast. But you're using way more than eight gigs because you're editing a freaking documentary. You're gonna be going through and transferring tons of footage. It's not gonna help that much. So these are good computers, but they're also only 1080p screens. So screen real estate for a 15 inch screen, what a 15.6 inch screen, it's not that great. You want a lot of resolution when editing video. At least that's my opinion because your GUI, so the graphics you use your interface is going to be smaller with a bigger resolution. So it's taking less of your space and you have more space to work on your actual footage. So instead of it being like this for your preview window um, and then like all of your timeline stuff taking up so much space, I wouldn't go with either of these computers. Let's check out the MacBook real quick though, just to give it a fair chance. Out of these three options, so those two PCs, the two Asus's, and this MacBook, I would go with the MacBook. But I'm gonna give you an option four, and I would go with that option four. But let's go over this. So you get a 256 gig SSD. I do know that, that it's an SSD. You get about the same CPU. Now you also get Macs, so Unix and like Mac OS X. When you have less good hardware, so slower hardware, Mac will perform pretty well with that slower hardware it's aware of what it has to work with and it's really good at using its resources. It's, I, I do appreciate that. The other thing is that its screen is way bigger. If we go, no, the screen size is actually like 0.2 inches smaller, but the resolution is a lot bigger. 
it's like the retina display that you've heard. Basically, it just means higher pixel count. So it has 2,280 pixels by 1,800 pixels versus 1,920 by 1,080 on the Asus side of things. And in this day and age, I would say get a higher resolution screen, to be honest, especially when editing video. Meanwhile, this costs a lot more and you only get 16 gigs of RAM and you only get like a quarter terabyte of storage. That's not a lot. I don't like this setup. I really, I no. Meanwhile, on the Canadian Lenovo.com site, I built a ThinkPad P72 and it came to, after discounts and stuff, like $3,020. And get, let, hear this out, it's ridiculous. It has a six core processor, like crazy. It's, I think it's just 2.2 gigahertz, just like the other ones, it's fine, whatever. But here's the cool thing, it's pretty much fully upgradable. It has a 4K monitor, so that's 3,840 pixels by 2160 pixels. Again, that's crazy. Um, that's like 4K. Um, that's what I'm currently operating on. The one that you see that I'm using, that's 4K. Um, then the memory, I, I put in 32 gigs. I put two sticks of 16 gigs in there. So you still have two slots and you can put up to 128 gigabytes of RAM in there. That is ridiculous. I'm what? That's that's so crazy. Like you can still upgrade this to 128 gigs of RAM. Ridiculous. And it has a quadro card in there. So the difference between GTX, RTX, and all of those gaming GPUs, those are meant for gaming. I have a feeling you're not gonna be doing that much gaming. And if you're going to be doing gaming, it doesn't matter. You can use the quadro for it. It's not gonna perform as well. It's the quadro is meant for AutoCAD and for rendering and for doing editing and compositing and video effects and things like that that are productivity based. They're not good for gaming, but that's why you're getting this. I have a GTX in my computer because it's cheaper because a lot of people buy them. Uh, Quadro cards are a lot more specialized, but you can get a Quadro card, do it. Like that's freaking amazing. Meanwhile, the camera is, <laughs> You're not going to use it. Doesn't really matter. Nothing to write home about. Uh, backlit keyboard. That's really convenient. Um, fingerprint reader. Blah de blah de blah. Okay. Now this is cool. There were tons of different options, and I'll just flash those up on the screen real quick. I chose the 512 gig SSD. You can upgrade that though. It's it's a M.2. That's super freaking fast. You. It is lightning fast. You're going to laugh so hard when you like. If you are to get this and see how fast it is. Oh my God, it is so fast. You're gonna, like, it's blinding fast. It's, it's, I can't even get over it. I have that in my ThinkPad right now and it's, it's so ungodly fast. It's, I, I can't get over it. I'm gonna stop talking now. It's, it's so fast. So you could have three hard drives in this computer though. It will be a beast. You can have anywhere from 256 gigs to two terabytes of SSD in your computer. You can have two bays. You could you could have, if you wanted to build this differently, you could have two one terabyte SSDs in this computer. And then you have just backup. I would not suggest doing that necessarily. It's nice to have the extra space. You can always plop in another normal hard drive, but they're slower and they use up more power. But having an external backup hard drive is key. I would just have that hard drive duplicate the like the hard drive on the computer just as a safety measure. If you drop your laptop, you don't want all of your files to only be on that and then they all are gone. You always should back up your stuff, always. There's no exception. Yeah, I can't think of an exception. Always back up your stuff. <laughs> There's no option there. Oh, you don't have enough money? Perfect, find money, back up your stuff. Doesn't matter, back it up because if you spend all the time and money to get the footage and then you, like you lose it because you didn't back it up. You didn't back it up. I don't know what to say. Like you have to find the means to back up your footage, duplicate it, boom, done. Best case, you can keep it in a separate spot as well. Anyway, put simply, this is the option you should get. So without those coupon things or discounts, it came to $3,700. And I don't know if that's with tax or not, but either way, this is between $3,000 and $4,500. Um, and with these coupons, it came to after tax. I, again, I, I don't know if taxes were included here, but I think this is the best deal. You could always skimp on some of these things. I We can go back and you can get 16 gigs of RAM and you can put that in later if you really wanted to. You can get cheaper stuff. I don't know, like there's so many options here. You can always get the 1080 and get, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I would recommend getting the 4K. You could go back into this and 
change up and save some money in different places if you don't have that type of cash. It's just, it offers you a lot more flexibility. Let's go back to, do you have any other questions here? You have a question, you have your final statement here. This might make you smile. You don't have to recreate. If you go from Final Cut to Premiere, you don't have to recreate everything from scratch. I think I was mentioning this at another point, but I'll mention it again. I looked this up right here, and basically you export a file. It's an XML file, and you export that from Final Cut, and you import that into Premiere, and boom. Will it be perfect? No. Will it save you potentially hundreds of hours if you have like an actual documentary and you're like transferring the project? Yes. You'll have to fix things here and there. Maybe the titles won't work properly or maybe this, maybe that, blah, 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 blah. It saves you from having to recreate every edit and every everything from scratch. It's, it maybe will take you an hour to like fix up everything. After that, you're good. You, I, it's a way to transfer all of your stuff from Final Cut to Premiere, boom, done. No problems, happy, Alex is happy. Yeah, I think I covered everything. I'm just gonna end this. If you have any more questions, they'll just make a follow-up. So that's, that's it for Alex, but for you watching who are not Alex, which is everyone else who's not Alex, you can look right over here, no, here, here, I'll go back a little bit. Basically right over here are other videos that I've done. You can check those out, they're all over the place. Just maybe you just wanna follow me and if that's the case, just subscribe to my channel and you'll, you'll get stuff and things sent to you eventually.